Hey guys, it's me, Sierra, aka The Nerd Girl Review, and I have one last video that I am pre-filming and scheduling in this attire. This would be my fifth video that I filmed today, which is more than I've done in like the past six months, maybe? I don't know, but this is definitely a record for me. Today I will be showing you some books that I have recently recently wow apparently I, I can't talk more than i thought i could recently acquired from various publishers and authors that were sent to me which i'd like to thank them to begin with um yeah so i didn't bring any books with me to college this year because my room didn't come with a bookshelf which is like what the hell books are vital how can i not have a space for them and um, I knew I wasn't going to have space to make a little makeshift shelf or anything, though now that I'm here, I might have to do something about that and bring some books from home over winter break. But um, I have some books that I'm going to show you guys today. There's not a lot, but you know, I mean, it's, it's a nice amount, especially since I came with no books. But yeah, I'm going to talk to you about this, about them. I don't know how to talk. So the first book I want to show you is called After the Texans by Declan Milling. And this was sent to me by Clink Street Publishing. Yes. Um, and let me read you the synopsis real quick. Having exposed the corrupt government in Papua New Guinea, the United Nations carbon market watchdog is riding high. But Emil Piffer, its head of marketing integrity, is in meltdown. The United Nations investigation has been shelved and his girlfriend, jo Johanna, Joanna, I don't know, has been kidnapped as insurance that his inquiries will go no further. Racked by guilt and desperate to find her, Emil finds himself thrust into the high-stakes battle being waged for control of the world's remaining fossil fuel resources. It's economic war for hegemony over the future of global energy being played out against the backdrop of Australian domestic politics where coal mining and the Great Barrier Reef are locked in a fight to the death. After the Texans is the second novel in the Carbon Black trilogy. So Clink Streak approached me asking if I would review this and I said yes and this comes out October 25th. And, um, like it said, this is the second book in the trilogy. I did not read the first book, but from what I was told, I can read this without having to know what happened in the first book. But I, um, I'm looking forward to reading this because I'm really big on sustainability and, you know, saving our environment. I think it's very important and vital that, you know, we do everything we can to protect it because we only have one Earth. It's not just gonna stay here forever unless we take care of it, so... Looking forward to reading this. Uh, a second book I like to show you guys is The Jekyll Revelation by Robert Mazzello. And, okay, first of all, can we just talk about how lovely this cover is? This is, this is a gorgeous cover. But this was an art that was sent to me by Little Bird Publishing, I believe, through 47 North which is Amazon's publishing company, I believe. But this comes out November... Mm, November 8th. Sorry I keep looking back that way. I have, like, my list of, like, when I'm supposed to have my reviews done for certain books and stuff. But and this comes out November 8th. And um, I'm going to read the synopsis for you. Um, here's the little one-liner before the synopsis. The wicked legacy of Jack the Ripper meets the literary origins of Jekyll and Hyde. Doesn't that sound interesting? Like, that's like one of the first things that like got me and I was like, okay, I think I can review this. This sounds good. While on routine patrol in the tinder dry to, 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 I can't talk. I told you guys I can't talk. Topango Canyon, environmental scientist Rafael Salazar expects to find animal poachers, not a dilapidated antique steamer trunk. Inside the peculiar case, he discovers a journal written by the renowned Robert Louise Stevenson, which divulges anonymous particles about his creation of the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and also promises to reveal a terrible secret, the identity of Jack the Ripper. 
Unfortunately, the journal, whose Machiavelli tale unfolds in an alternating narrative with Rathi's, isn't the only relic in the trunk, and Rafi isn't the only one to purloin a souvenir. A mysterious flask containing the last drops of the grisly potion that inspired Jekyll and Hyde and spawned London's most infamous killer has gone missing, and it has definitely fallen into the wrong hands. Doesn't that sound really interesting? Like, I love Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's one of my favorite classics, and I really love retellings of it and, like, adapt adaptations of it. And I also think Jack the Ripper is very interesting. So the fact that this combines both of them is, like... But I'm really excited to pick this up and see what it's all about. And yeah, it should be really interesting. It's been a while since I've read any really good like mystery thriller type adaptation. So let's see how that goes. And this is just a little news thingy. They send in those. It's probably too late for you guys to see that. But it was a Little Bird Publishing. I got that right. Publicity. The next book I have is The Book of the Unnamed Midwife. And I actually directly requested this from Amazon Publishing, or should I say 47 North, since that's the exact publishing company. But um, Because this sounded really, really interesting. And I'm going to tell you guys the synopsis and go into details later. But when she fell asleep, the world was doomed. When she awoke, it was dead. In the wake of a fever that decimated the Earth's population, killing women and children and making childbirth deadly for the mother and infant, the midwife must pick her way through the bones of the world she once knew to find her place in this dangerous new one. Gone are the pillars of civilization. All that remains is power, and the strong who possesses it. A few women like her survived, though they are scarce. Even fewer are safe from the clans of men, who, driven by fear, seek to control those remaining. To preserve her freedom, she dons men's clothing, goes by false names, and avoids as many possible, many people as possible. But as the world continues to grapple with its terrible circumstances, she'll discover a world greater than chasing a pale imitation of independence. After all, if humanity is to be reborn, someone must be its guide. Doesn't that sound really interesting? And what really got me got my attention is um, a few things. This story deals with feminism, rape, and women's culture, which I think is very important. And the author is a woman of color, so I think it's really important that we have diversity among our authors and in our stories that tackle so many different issues. And so I can't wait to pick this one up and see what it's all about. This comes out October... Sorry, going through my list again. Uh, October 11th. And last but certainly not least is the one that surprised me the most. This is Wrecked, a novel, and it is written by Maria Padian. An interesting story. So I went directly on Algonquin's publishing website and I recorded got their email and stuff, and I sent them a physical arc request via email. And this was the first, like, physical arc request I've ever sent in my life. And so I didn't hear back from them, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to get it. That's cool. Come a week later, I get a notification from um, the mail people, like, you have a package, and I'm like, well, that is what I have. And I go, and I open it, and it's this book. And they've got their little, like press release thingy on it, and, um, you guys probably can't see that, but it's that, and it's got the purpose review up there, but, like, I was really surprised that I got this. I wasn't expecting to actually, you know, get the book since I didn't hear back from them, but that just goes to show, just because you don't get a reply doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, but let me read to you guys what this book is about and why it caught my attention. Uh, the synopsis is in here. I forgot. Oh, no, 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 it's in here. Uh, I forget. Arcs are a little different than normal-ish copies. <clears throat> Everyone has heard a different version of what happened that night in McCallum College. Haley was, read Haley was already in her bed when her roommate, Jenny, arrived home shell-shocked from wild conundrum house party. Richard heard his housemate, Jordan, brag about the cute freshman he hooked up with. When Jenny formally accuses Jordan of rape, 
Haley and Richard find themselves pushed onto opposite sides of the school's investigation. But conflicting interests fueling conflicting versions of the story may make bringing the truth to light nearly impossible, especially when reputations, relationships, and whole futures are riding on the verdict. Maria Padian offers a kaleidoscope view of sexual assault on college campus, where I will leave readers thinking about how memory and identity, what's at stake, and who sits in judgment shape what we all decide to believe about the truth. So I think this is a really important story since it deals with sexual assault on college campuses, which is a huge problem that we have in the United States. And so I can't wait to read this book and see how they tackle such an important issue as rape. Those are all the books that I had to show you that I've acquired as of late. And um, who knows when I'll have another haul. Until next time.